Australians are being encouraged to be more mindful of their heart health in 2023. Joining us now for some top tips on how to do that is Professor Jason Kovacic, Director of the Victor Chang Cardiac Institute. How are you and how's your heart? I'm well, thanks, Jenny. Good <laughs> to see you. Great. Now, you've got some really interesting tips. We'll start with salt because we hear some good and not so good stories right. about it. Great. There's just been so much exciting developments happening around heart health over the last few years, and particularly the last year. Salt substitution has really been proven in the last year to be incredibly helpful for our heart and actually our brain health as well. So salt substitution involves reducing the sodium content of salt and supplementing that with potassium. It's usually about a quarter of salt is replaced with potassium. This is now available in most supermarkets as heart salt or potassium salt. It reduces blood pressure. And the big data out during last year has shown that that reduction in blood pressure translates into reduction in strokes, heart attacks and the saving of lives. So it's really time we start thinking about substituting sodium salt with potassium salt. Because it's amazing, isn't it, what is what products have got salt in it, we'd be surprised right. with the amounts. There's so much salt used in cooking, in different products, and it, it may be actually time for a global push towards replacing sodium salt with a component of potassium salt. Mm, very interesting indeed. What about a good night's sleep? How is that for your heart? Sleep has really come up in the last year or two as being really important, and it's led the American Heart Association to change what they used to call life's simple seven to life's essential eight. So these are the eight core things we can do for our heart health, which is diet, exercise, glucose, lowering or avoiding diabetes, body weight, cholesterol, avoiding smoking, blood pressure, and now sleep. So it's been shown that clearly sleep is linked to blood pressure, glucose, cholesterol, weight, but it's also an independent uh, risk factor for heart health. So getting a healthy night's sleep is really important. And for adults, that comes down to seven to nine hours of sleep per night. Well, that's good to know, isn't it? Uh, yeah, we must make that mandatory, mustn't we? Because we must a, make it. And yeah. it's also things we can do. There's, there's Fitbits, there's watches, yeah. there's these rings I've got on now that you can actually measure your sleep and record it for yourself. So it's actually getting easier to track your sleep and have healthy sleep habits. All right. And what about uh, cholesterol markers? Because we know there's good cholesterol, bad cholesterol, right. and there's a new marker. Over the last few years, we've understood there's a second bad cholesterol called lipoprotein A or LPA. It's been hard to measure, hard to treat, but it's really the data for it is now overwhelming. And there are specific therapies that are just around the corner for this. It is now able to be assessed and measured. And it's quite likely that a significant proportion of people have high lipoprotein A levels. Particularly, it's worth checking in those people with a family history of early heart disease, people with early heart disease, unexplained family histories. It's worth getting this lipoprotein A checked because there are things we can now do and certainly in the next few years we'll be able to do even more to lower that. So are you recommending specifically asking for that particular test as right. opposed to just your other general cholesterol checks? That's a great question. So at the moment, lipoprotein A is not part of a standard lipid panel that checks cholesterol, triglycerides, good and bad cholesterol. You have to ask for lipoprotein A to be measured. It can be easily done though. It's, it's also very genetically determined. So people tend to have a high lipoprotein A level and they carry it for many years. So it doesn't need to be checked as often as a regular cholesterol. Just a one-off check is a great starting point. Now the world is still anxiously waking, uh, waiting on Buffalo Bill's safety. Damar Hamlin, he remains in a critical condition. We're hearing signs of uh, his showing improvement. Mm. From your expertise, can you tell us what has happened? Mm. Firstly, an incredibly sad event mm. and our thoughts are with the families, the spectators, the players of the sport. And worth saying, an amazing job done by the NFL in America. They implemented their emergency action plan, on-site medics, defibrillators are able to do CPR, resuscitate him, get a heartbeat back on the field. You know, this is a really great demonstration of a coordinated response can really save lives. And this is happening in Australia with groups like Heartbeat of Football and Unexplained Cardiac Death doing great jobs, defibrillators at sports fields and so on. As far as his specific event, we're still speculating and the normal cause of unexplained cardiac death on the sports field is usually undiagnosed genetic heart disorders. But Damar Hamlin suffered a blow right on the sternum as he was running and collapsed pretty soon after that. 
there is a condition called commotio cordis, which is a blow to the sternum timed at precisely the wrong moment of the heart cycle. So it's only a 20 millisecond window, but it's a well-documented cause of sudden cardiac death in otherwise healthy people that actually have normal hearts. Wow, it's, um, yeah, as you said, our thoughts are with him and his family. It's incredible, and as you said, like a 20 millisecond gap there. Yeah, it's, it's a well, very well described, but a rare event. And it's while the heart is actually relaxing and sort of recharging its electrical circuits, a blow at that time, that the heart's particularly vulnerable, can put the heart into a lethal rhythm. And, and all hearts are susceptible to that. Thankfully, it's an incredibly rare event, but very well described. Yeah, well, thank you for coming on, Jason Kovacic. We'll talk to you again soon. Thanks, Janie. Thanks.